he's, he's right. following us. Yeah, he's, he's wondering what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. It's making me slightly on edge. Now you've said that, me too. <laughs> so is it safe to say, Justin, that this is one of the dodgier parts of Riga? Uh, by all means, it's actually known for it. Is this a shady neighbourhood going? It is a shady. Should I be fearful for my safety? I'm more scared of my own safety. There's nothing more precious than my own life. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Riga, Latvia, and meet my friend, Justin, of Justin Eastern Europe for YouTube channel. I've got a lot of time for the content you make. You bring some brilliant footage from this part of the world. I appreciate it, mate. Justin's based in Riga, and he's been hosting me and Mr. Gabe, who's with me on this video too. How's it going, Gabe? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, Gabe's good. And Gabe's going to be joining us. Justin's going to show us around Riga, which is where you're based. Absolutely, yeah. I've been here for a couple of years. I know the city well. And uh, I thought we'd begin right here, right at the famous Freedom Monument. And, yeah. You know, give you a little tour of Riga, a little bit of its history, uh, but also some places that maybe you wouldn't find yourself, but I find extremely interesting. So we'll start off with that road that runs back there. Yeah. Behind this monument. It's a 12 kilometer road. And this is all the history I'm going to give you about Riga. It'll summarize it. During the last century, that road changed its name more times than you can imagine. It was Alexandrovska Street, which obviously is Russian. Then it became Freedom Street, which it's its name again now. It was also Adolf Hitler Street. It really? was, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was Lenin Street, and now it's Freedom Street again. Maybe one day it'll be just in Eastern Europe Street. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Riga not through the touristic eyes, which I would have seen it through if I hadn't have come and met Justin, if he hadn't been kind enough to host us. I'm really looking forward to seeing your Riga. Exactly. It, not necessarily the one that's exactly. on the but, tourist map. You know, anybody that watches my channel knows that I'm not going to necessarily make videos that you could find just as easily. It's pointless. There's a lot of great content out there already. Yeah. And I wanted to start with a little bit of a history because Today we're going to venture into areas and what Riga is really famous for is its architecture. Yeah. And the influences, the different influences from the different countries that have had power here and ruled over Latvia is impressive, it's phenomenal. And having given you those names, you can see what kind of influences just in the Absolutely, last century. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to go and venture into an area now, once again, as I was telling you earlier, this monument here is kind of like the dividing line. On that side, you've got the old town. Yeah. And here's where the center begins. Okay. But there's also an area called the quiet center. And that's kind of like on that side. And look at these buildings. These buildings across the street right now, it's literally a museum in a city. You can yeah. walk along that building a hundred times and notice different things, different details, because they're so full of just minute works of art that it's absolutely impressive. Let's cross the street and head that way. I think um, when I've watched uh, Justin's videos before, I'm, uh, I'm quite familiar with a term that you've coined for me, museum cities. Yes. Yeah, I really, uh, I really enjoy that term. You've used it for Krakow as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are certain cities that they're just fascinating just to walk around and they're just so impressive. They're really like a work of art. Yeah. And you know, me being kind of like obsessed with, well not so much obsessed, but I'm really fascinated yeah. with the era of the Cold War, this fusion of old and Soviet communist style architecture yeah. that I find really impressive. I'm, I just mentioned to Justin off camera before we started filming, but I've been absolutely, almost overwhelmed, blown away by the size of the Soviet like uh, the, the structures and the roads, wide boulevards, um, impressive chiseled monuments, yep. architecture that's pristine. There really was an effort by especially that regime to impress with architecture, wasn't oh, it? Absolutely, absolutely. It was all grandiose. Yeah. And what, what's fascinating about Riga as well is that in every... Um, Soviet city, especially capitals, 
the prime location for any monument would have always been Lenin. Yeah. Yet Lenin, well it's not on this corner, Lenin stood right around here. It's on the next next block. Okay. But what's impressive is that the Freedom Monument was never demolished. Yeah. And Lenin took second place. So that's something very unique that a lot of people don't know. So let's let's chat a little bit while we're like walking in between yeah. locations. Um, your story that led to you being based in Riga? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, Riga is a fantastic city in itself. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wasn't um, forced to come here. I didn't have uh, a job opportunity that made me come here. It got to a point where I had to pick and choose. Yeah. And living the lifestyle I lived, there were certain criteria that I had to have in order to, to, to make it a, a, a viable possibility. First off was an airport. Riga is the most important airport in all the Baltics, flights to London every day, uh, connections to everywhere, so that's very convenient. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that made it a, a big plus. Um, it's a city, but you can walk everywhere. You don't need a car. I don't even own a car here. I own a little larder as a novelty. Yeah, I've seen your I've seen your larder. Yeah. In in one video, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah when you went out for the day. In it, yeah, yeah, but but that's just a novelty. It's not a car I use every day yeah. to, to, to run around because there's absolutely no need here. And I think the 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 history, the culture for me is fascinating. Now, the way I ended up here is that, you know, ever since the 90s I've been doing uh, some work in Eastern Europe yeah Russia former Soviet Union and this was always you know in the Soviet Union you have to understand that Latvia was like the, the gem of the Soviet Union yeah it was the bridge to to the West it was it was really the the, uh, the, the most prestigious place as a matter of fact Yurmala Beach which is just 20 minutes down the road okay was really the playground for all the elites of the Soviet Union, okay. even though supposedly... Like the, the Monte Carlo of, of the Soviet in Union? Essence, yeah, in essence, yeah, all the yeah. holidays and everything else. So, you know, obviously that made it a winner for me because the, the history, the, the, the uh, architecture, the way it was kept, maintained and everything else. Yeah. You know, going to Moldova, fabulous place, love it, but it's a bit run down and yeah. it's a bit... So, you know, this place just had, it ticked all the boxes, really, so. Yeah, I mean, we, we drove up last night, well, through the day, and we arrived last night, didn't we, Gabe? Uh, we drove up from Lithuania, and we noticed when we crossed the border that the incredibly developed nature of Riga isn't necessarily the case in provincial Latvia, is it? We found no. some empty buildings, a lot of empty farmhouses, and today we're going to go to an area that's possibly not as impressive or as glamorous yeah. as the center of Riga. I think it's important we show the viewers that as Exactly. Well. That's the reality of, of this part of the world is that, you know, once you venture off the beaten track, let's say, it can be rather, I wouldn't say shocking, but you'd be like, oh my God, do people really live like this? Yeah. Is it really like that, you know? Mr. Gabe was just saying how in some ways Riga really reminds him of Lithuania, his but native not, land. Yeah, but it's not, it's not it's kind of similar, but it's on a bigger scale. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. Look at these these avenues and streets, they're just magnificent. And then you go Grand, across the street, yeah. and it's a completely different style. What a contrast it is, it of is architecture. Contrast. I'm not professing to be any kind of um, architecture expert at all. I just love walking around the world just seen like the just the, the grand designs yeah well I'm, I'm no expert either but Latvia is renowned for its Art Nouveau so yeah. it's a type of architecture uh, that dates back to the beginning of the last century 1920s it was very popular in France and Belgium uh, but as a matter of fact Latvia has the highest quantity of Art Nouveau buildings in the world okay it's it's a it's a kaleidoscope of different styles it is, isn't it, it? it is, it's just a complete absolutely stunning me and Gabe would never have ventured down here but that's that's the true heart of Riga I would say this you know I mean I love the old town don't get me wrong it's impressive it's lovely the architecture is great there 
but it's very manicured it's, whereas here you really see the whole fusion of how the history of Latvia of Riga yeah. evolved um, I, um, I, I think the old town is beautiful it's where 95% plus of visitors to Riga will find themselves I think that's safe to say but there are a lot of old towns in Europe Eastern Europe the Baltics and this is genuinely unique. Yeah. I mean, look at that. That's just like I don't think anybody's been in there for the last what 50 years. No. That's almost a challenge. I'm not an architect uh, expert, but I do find it fascinating. We don't so, have to be experts to find it fascinating. Exactly to enjoy it. But what you do have to do is visit these places and immerse yourself. Exactly. in walking the lesser visiting streets. Well, we're going to do the contrast. Now we're going to the Art Nouveau side. Yeah. Then we're going to hop on the 15 uh, trolley bus, yeah. which is a, a renowned trolley bus here in, uh, in Riga. And we're going to go to the other extreme, where most buildings are like this. Yeah. That's the north. And, uh, and yeah, also full of, full of history. Justin has uh, quite a sort of uh, cute interesting story about why you started vlogging we were talking about that last night um, and Justin very much I, uh, he says this in, in some of his videos and I can definitely vouch for it having met him 24 hours ago you're exactly the same off camera <laughs> as know. on and it was uh, well, can you can you tell the can you tell the guys the uh, story of how like your daughter yeah. decided that you should start filming yeah I mean I wasn't into YouTube for me YouTube was the thing that the kids used for watching video games yeah. or you know make up things and uh, I was uh, traveling with my daughter and I um, can't remember what city it was if it was Brussels or whatnot and she said we was speaking to people and I'm speaking to people in French and in Arabic and then and she's like, Dad, you gotta vlog that you gotta get a camera and record this and, and put it on YouTube. Here we've just reached Alberta Street. Look at that. And look at this. I mean <laughs> this is this I mean you could watch this building for an hour and not just really grasp the amount of detail. The intricacy exactly. of the faces. Let's hop on a what they call a trolley bus. And that's basically a bus with two sticks. Yeah. Connected to electric cables. Yeah. They're very common here. And uh, let's go to the other part of town, the other extreme. Okay. I'm a man that enjoys exploring extremes. Normally, I'm climbing down cliffs or walking long distances on the coast. But today, I'm going to explore all the different faces of Riga. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this facade. Yeah. How grandiose. And yet, on the inside. Let's venture in. I don't know if it's supposed to be here, but... Oh, wow. Almost, so this is nicely done. Almost up. like a, a prison. But on the inside, you'd never guess that this is what it looked oh, like. Oh, wow. It's unbelievable. Yes. Oh, wow. It's like a completely different That's um, That's such a stark contrast. <laughs> it is, isn't it? My partner has a home in the old town. Big one. Okay. Oh, yeah? yeah. 3,000 square meters. 3,000 or 300? 3,000. 3,000 no, square meters. 2,500 me square meters plus minus. Yeah. Big pad. That's yeah. like this building? Yes. Ah, you'll be selling the whole building? Yeah, yeah. We're ah, selling I thought one building. apartment. I'm like, oh. <laughs> ah, you're selling a building in the old town? Yeah, yeah. We have some, we have there some, we have a huge arena here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the arena Riga is Riga yours is as well? All, yeah. I'm gonna be there on the 10th of September. There's a concert I want to go to. Who's playing? Uh, what is that concert? Uh, it's called uh, Kino. It's a Russian band from uh, the 1980s. Yeah. I know, but the European <laughs> Union made them close. I dread to think why so Gabe is like like taking a picture of that busty sculpture. <laughs> but you look at that. <laughs> <laughs> is that going in your secret file, Gabe? No, I will use that later. <laughs> Can you wait maybe till I'm out at the bar before you use that photo? <laughs> I love how um, like there's a really like intellectual conversation behind us going yeah. on about the architecture yeah, and the history the of Latvia, and we're just staring at the tits. <laughs> but <laughs> people that watch my channel know that there's probably a mixture, a healthy mixture of toilet humour and educational content. Enough of all this uh, grand, phenomenal 
expensive architecture and real estate. Let's jump on the buzz and go and check out the shabbier side of Riga. A place that I'll probably feel more comfortable walking around in. Okay, we jumped on the number 15 trolley bus. Justin's taking me to the Moscow neighborhood of Riga and apparently there's some really unique architecture, very different to what we've seen already. Wait for the traffic here. Yeah. I think we've snuck into someone's uh, backyard. It's all right. We're going to shop down in this <laughs> At least I've got a marker for where I am geographically. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. So if I have to uh, run home quickly from the shady characters in this neighbourhood, I know which way to run. Is this a shady neighbourhood, guy? It is a shady neighbourhood. Should I be fearful for my safety? I don't know. I'm, I'm more scared of my own safety. There's nothing more precious than my own life. <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're my custodian in the Baltic states. Oh, that's uh, you know in Lithuania. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. In Latvia. Oh, you wash your hands of me in Latvia. It's all yeah. new okay. To me, though. <laughs> so it seems Justin has uh, brought us along to a very interesting and slightly sketchy part of Riga, very different to the center we were walking around earlier. Some characters for sure. Yeah, we're in the right neighborhood. Yeah. I'm looking for the actual Jewish ghetto okay. that was here in Riga. Yeah. That uh, would have been the place where they held the Jews together before shipping them out to all the different concentration camps. Yeah, much the same um, as in Poland. Yeah. In Krakow, yeah. Exactly. Although they did have a concentration camp right here in Salaspils, about 20 minutes outside Riga. Have you visited it? No. Yeah. No, I haven't, but it is on the uh, on the list of to-dos, let's put it this way. Sure. Good job I got double glazing. I'm just wondering why, why did they connect a wing mirror to their window frame? I've never they seen anything like that before. Huh? Yeah. They could see who's standing next to the gate. Yeah, but it's yeah. off a car. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. It's usable. So who someone cares, says the yeah, Lithuania. So it's completely normal. It works, it off a car. So someone's knocking the door here, and yeah. that car wing mirror <laughs> in a typical uh, Eastern European Baltic style. That's uh, that's the makeshift homemade security cam. <laughs> the Latvian security system. <laughs> А как я понимаю, здесь раньше был еврейский гетто, да? Вы знаете именно где? Какие улицы или, или это просто? Там какой-то парк там был, еврейский кладбище там расследование. А кладбище там, да? Да. Хорошо. Спасибо большое. following us. Yeah, he's, he's wondering what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's making me slightly on edge. Now you've said that, me too. <laughs> are we going to have a drive-by, Gabe? Huh? Are we going to have a drive-by? It feels like we are. <laughs> it's almost unbelievable that this place hasn't been knocked down. Well, that is interesting. I think he got all his mates to sign his car, this one. Yeah. As a naive Brit, it's quite um, sort of astonishing to me that a lot of these buildings haven't been knocked down and that they're still seen. They're protected, you can't knock okay. them down. Especially the wooden ones, like these ones, you can't knock them down, they're part of history. They have a haunting beauty, don't they? They do, don't they? Yeah. It's safe to say, Gabe, I've never been anywhere like this. I don't know if I have been in a place like this. I mean, there are some parts in Lithuania like this, but not like this. Like this, this, you know. This sort of uh, goes along with like the line of we've been talking the last few days about how Riga is quite developed, it is but developed, yeah. it doesn't take much travelling outside of Riga, and it's very undeveloped. I might be jumping to conclusions, but I don't think I'd like to walk around this neighbourhood with this camera at night. Does that still qualify as uh, a staircase? 
Barely. What a way to live. So we are in the ghetto right okay. now. Okay. This house, guys, you just told me, is 130 years old. А в основном вот от Ерцика до Лудзас, вот там было все обнесено, но здесь тоже было. А в основном вот то место все. От Малогорной до Двинской это было все, все. А там вот кладбище еврейские дальше, знаете? Кладбище тоже есть, да? Да. Интересно. Спасибо большое вам. Пожалуйста. Очень приятно было. Счастливо. До свидания. До свидания. So is it safe to say, Justin, that this is one of the dodgier parts of Riga? Uh, by all means, it's actually known for it. In the 80s, 90s, um, this place was just like drug central, criminals. So I just want to thank Justin for hosting me for the last couple of days a in Riga. Pleasure, mate. A I've real seen pleasure. all sides of this wonderful city. Mm. I've seen the grand, like, epic architecture of not just the old town, but was it the Art Nouveau yeah, area? Art yeah. Nouveau, yeah, absolutely stunning. Surprising that some of the facades are far more grand than the interior of the buildings. Yeah, yeah. And then I was uh, taken to what is most definitely the hood of Riga, to the, uh, is it the Moskva? Yeah, Mo Moscow basically, Moskva. Yeah. Uh, ah, shit ah. weather still. Shit weather. Just in order some Cornish weather for me, just to make me feel at home <laughs> yeah, in this. Uh, back get used to it again. You know? Get me used to it. So uh, I've had beautiful sunshine yesterday, and then drizzly, miserable weather at the moment. But that doesn't stop me saying I've had a great time, mate. I've really well, enjoyed hanging out with you. And it's been a pleasure to meet you. I don't think it will be the last time we make some footage together. I hope not. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah I think, I think you'll well. put me over my neck in the woods for some time. I might bump into you in a part of Eastern Europe somewhere. We Absolutely, never know, do we? Mate. mate, a real pleasure. Legend. Have a good Thanks night. for watching, folks. Until next time, right on.